Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black, red and green or junt colored transformation deck that's both trying to melt Titania with Argoth to achieve Titania Gaia Incarnate, as well as trying to transform Shieldred into the true scriptures. And to make that happen, we're counting on Breach the Multiverse. The 7 mana sorcery mills each player for 10, and then for each player we get to choose a creature or planeswalker in that player's graveyard and return those to the battlefield under our control. So Breach the Multiverse not only helps us find Shieldred and Titania, but also fills the graveyard to enable them both. So first let's take a look at Shieldred. The 5 mana 4-5 legendary Frex Imperator has menace, and when it enters a battlefield each opponent has to sacrifice a non-token creature or planeswalker, so has an immediate effect when it enters, which is great. And then for 5 mana we can transform Shieldred into the true scriptures, but only if an opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard. So that's where milling the opponent for 10 with Breach the Multiverse will naturally enable Shieldred. And then on the first chapter of the saga we can destroy a creature or planeswalker the opponent controls. On chapter 2 the opponent has to mill 3 and discard 3 cards, and eventually we can return all creatures from all graveyards onto the battlefield under our control, and transform scriptures back into Shieldred, so we can potentially do it all over again. So once again by milling each player for 10, we also enable the final chapter of the true scriptures, which is great. So now let's take a look at Titania, a 3 mana 3-4 three, with reach, saying whenever one or more land cards are put into our graveyard from anywhere, we gain 2 life, so that can also work alongside Breach the Multiverse if we have Titania in play, we likely gain 2 life, but it also works very nicely with our fetch lands, we've got 1 Courtyard and 4 copies of a Riveteer's Overlook, which can immediately gain 2 life if we put them in our graveyard, and then gain 1 more as well, so we can essentially gain 3 with Titania on the battlefield. We also have our Jukai Visionary, which can maybe mill a few lands and gain life with Titania, but the important part here is that we want to get lands in our graveyard, because at the beginning of our upkeep, if we have four or more land cards in our graveyard, and we both own and control Titania, as well as Argoth, which is this land right here, then we get to melt both into Titania, Gaia Incarnate, which has power and toughness each equal to the number of lands we control, and conveniently when we melt Titania, we get to return all land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So once again, milling ourselves for 10 with Breach the Multiverse has quite a few advantages, as we also get to put more lands onto the battlefield with the melded Titania now. And then a Titania also has Vigilance, Reach, Trample and Haste, and for 4 mana can turn one of our lands into a 0-0 elemental, putting 4 plus Wampus Fang counters on it, so that can be another nice mana sink to help close out the game, in case Titania itself isn't enough, which is uh, unlikely to be the case. And then Argoth, also a nice land to have access to in this deck, can enter untapped if we control a legendary green creature, and there's quite a few in this deck between our Shigeki, Got Nissa, Titania, Glissa, and Soul of Windgrace at 4 mana, which can all help this enter untapped, and then also has an activated ability, making a 2-2 green bear creature token, and milling 3 cards, so that can also help enable cards like Titania or Shieldred, which is pretty nice. Also gives us a pretty good card in a control matchup, as the opponent's unlikely to interact with our land, and then we've got a steady stream of 2-2 tokens until we run out of cards in our library. So that's Titania in a nutshell, and then we've got some other very nice cards in this deck to help tie things together. We have our 5 fetch lands, which also work very nicely alongside Nissa, Resurgent Animist, which with a landfall can make 1 mana of any color, so just playing Nissa into a land can also generate 5 mana on turn 4 to potentially cast a shieldred ahead of schedule, but Nissa also very nice with our fetch lands, as we can enable a landfall multiple times in the same turn to not only make a lot of mana, but if this ability resolved for a second time this turn, we also get to reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal an elf or elemental card and put it into our hand. And we've got a couple elves and elementals, Nissa is an elf, we've got a Glissa, Sunslayer, also a very good card, and then a Titania happens to be an elemental, so we can find Titania if we just enable landfall twice with Nissa, which is pretty trivial in this deck, especially when we have a Soul of Windgrace as another option. When it enters battlefield or attacks, we can return any land from a graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under our control, so we can easily just play a fetch land in the first couple turns, play Soul of Windgrace on turn 4, and then return that same fetch land, once again grabbing a basic land, gaining one life, and then it's in the graveyard once again to return with Soul of Windgrace once it attacks. So that's another way of enabling a landfall twice with Nyssa, as well as simply ramping towards our 7 mana sorcery, which is also pretty important in this deck. And then with Soul of Windgrace we can also potentially return Argoth from our graveyard to the battlefield if we happen to mill it with Breach the Multiverse, already have a Titania on the battlefield, 
Now maybe we return a soul of wind grace from our graveyard, in turn getting back Argoth, so we're ready to melt Titania on the following turn. So all these cards are working very nicely in harmony. And then we also have three copies of Shigeki, Jukai Visionary, can be played early, and then we can for one on a green tap and return it to our hand to then reveal the top four cards of our library, putting a land from among them onto the battlefield tapped, and the rest goes into our graveyard. So that can also help fill the graveyard for our various synergies, helps us ramp to eventually get to our Breach the Multiverse, and we can also channel Shigeki from our hand, which is an uncounterable ability for double X, double green, have to discard it in the process, and return X, target a non-legendary card from our graveyard to our hand. So we won't be able to return Titania or Shieldred with it, but we can just get back a Breach the Multiverse if we happen to mill it, and then Breach will do the rest. So that's also a very powerful mode of Shigeki in the late game. Can also get back our various removal spells with it. And uh, yeah, speaking of removal spells, at one mana I've got three copies of Cutdown, at two mana three copies of Go for the Throat, two copies of Shieldred's Edict, can be a better answer to opposing Planeswalkers, can also get around the poison ability from an opposing Rot Priest, and then at two copies of Terra Asunder, which can answer artifacts or enchantments, can also kick it to deal with any opposing a non-land permanent instead. And then at 3 mana we already mentioned Glissa briefly as another powerful elf we can find with Nissa. 3-3, three, three, first rank and death touch, so it's a nightmare for opposing creature decks. And if it hits the opponent we can either draw a card at the cost of 1 life, destroy an enchantment, or remove up to 3 counters from a permanent. And then we also have two copies of Choking Miasma, which can be kicked for an additional green mana, in which case we get a plus one counter on our whole team, and then all creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. So none of our creatures should die to the Miasma, and this can be a nice answer to some of the go-wide creature decks making lots of tokens that are trying to out-aggro us. And then we also have three copies of Invasion of Zendikar, which is a great way to ramp towards or breach the multiverse on the following turn, as we get to find two basic lands and put them on the battlefield tapped. Also very nice follow-up to a Nissa Resurgent Animist, as we get to enable landfall twice, find another elemental or elf and put it in hand, as well as just making a bunch of mana that we can still use in that very same turn. Also can potentially transform our Invasion of Zendikar by attacking it with Nissa. and then if we get the Awakened Skyclave, it also counts as a land, so can enable landfall once again, can itself tap for mana, and is a 4-4 with Vigilance and Haste, so it can also start applying quite a bit of pressure. So yeah, there's a ton of synergy throughout. We do have quite a few lands entering the battlefield tapped is the downside, but we do need a lot of fetch lands to consistently enable Soul of Wind Grace and Nyssa. So we've got the four copies of Overlook and even one more Cabaretti Courtyard just to get one extra fetch land in there. And then to go with the fetch lands, we also need plenty of basics. So we've got four forests, six swamps and a mountain, which we also need to find with our Invasion of Zendikar. And then the Abandoned Mire can also be channeled to maybe find Titania or Shieldred in the graveyard. And then Boseju gives us a bit more interaction. The channel lands also pretty nice with Soul of Wind Grace. And then we've got four copies of Proving Ground, giving us more red mana to cast Soul of Wind Grace reliably, and two copies of Lander Waste as another nice untapped land. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. This portion of the video is brought to you by Cook and Becker and their officially licensed Magic the Gathering art print collection. Their pieces include Kiora the Crashing Wave by Scott Fisher, Nissa of Shadowed Bows by Dave Raposa, Buzzery Cat by Toshiaki Takayama, Kalia of the Vast by Scott Fisher, and Bitter Blossom by Rebecca Gay. There will be two variants available for each one, the standard digital print and the deluxe screen print, which can come in different sizes. Each print will also come with a certificate of authenticity, and I love what they've done with the mana symbols on those. Every order of a premium print has a 1 in 10 chance of receiving an exclusive not-for-sale print of Black Lotus by Christopher Rush. This is a limited edition print run, so get yours while they're still available, and check out their website using the link in the video description, and any purchases will help support the channel, so that's always very much appreciated. And now back to the gameplay. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got the option of either removal or visionary turn 2. Against blue-black, we'll play Visionary. And if we get to untap, we can start ramping. Okay, so... Pass it back. Only basic lands in place, so Field of Ruin not too effective. Mm 
and Overlook can find a mountain here or another swamp. Either way. We'll get a swamp here. And then I can replay Visionary. Since there's nothing in play to take out with Shieldred yet. Play Bandenmeyer and pass a turn. Slowly building up our mana. Can eventually channel Visionary to get back some stuff from the graveyard. And a march to take out Visionary, that's fine. So I still don't really want to play Shieldred, but now an invasion is a great option. Develop our mana. Don't expose Visionary to another removal spell. And now we can just breach next turn if there's uh, no counter spell. Cruelty can check out our hand. Take away Shieldred most likely. Could grab a Visionary as well. Which can get back breach. Whatever they make me discard I could also get back next turn. And Atraxa is a good one. And we'll get a Soul of Windgrace versus Nissa. Visionary also an option, as we said. Soul of Windgrace is the most value. Since I won't be able to trigger Nissa twice this turn. And then Atraxa gets Soul of Windgrace. We've got a battle. Maybe another fetch land. Although. We don't have an Argoth yet, so I probably want that. And a cut down. And then Windgrace can get the opponent's Mirex. Sure. And then play Swamp and pass it back. We've got cut down available. Opponent does get to tutor up whatever they want. So they are a reanimator deck from the looks of it. They might be able to take out Atraxa and then reanimate it. Edict deals with Soul of Windgrace since we have a backup. But they've got another one. Alright, so next turn, I guess the third chapter from Cruelty can also get back their Atraxa. Which is not what we want to have happen necessarily. If I had grabbed Boseju instead of uh, Argoth... I would have been able to blow up the enchantment. Now we gotta come up with a different plan. Now of course Shieldred can still answer Atraxa quite nicely. If I play Shieldred now, I could also transform it right away. And then we're kind of banking on the uh, second and third chapter of the saga being effective. Or I can just get Soul of Windgrace going again and keep up some removal if necessary. Sure. And do I want my own fetch land? Not really. We'll just grab the opponents. Play invasion. Don't want to expose Argoth to Field of Ruin, although I don't think it's going to matter too much at this point. Opponents looking at our graveyard as well as a potential option, but yeah, Traxa is always going to make more sense. Devious cover-up seems to be in their deck. So they are running a couple counter spells at least. So their opponent grabs cover-up, harvester and a land. Could go with an end of turn Shieldred's Edict. But I don't think our opponent's gonna fire off a counter spell when they know we have Shieldred in hand. Another cruelty, that's too bad. It's gonna grab Shieldred's. So now we're forced to just Edict to get rid of Atraxa, but they'll eventually get it back. So we have to make a bit of progress in the meantime, I guess. Alright, picked up another Shieldred. Let's have a look at the graveyards. So there's one Breach and Multiverse left in the deck. And then Visionary could also maybe return it. Okay, so Soul of Windgrace can attack our Invasion. And get back a land. Play 
my shield roots. And transform it. And pass a turn after maybe activating Argoth. 23 cards remaining. We milled Boseju. Opponent can tutor up a reanimation spell to bring back a Traxa before we do. With Miasma, we can shrink down a creature to try and cut it down, but a 7-7 seven, seven down to a 5-5 five, five is still too big for a cut down. They could have also searched up an answer to our scriptures. Another cruelty. They know our hand, so they're going to start from chapter 3 this time. Immediately reanimating a Traxa. Which finds another Atraxa, a removal or counter spell, and a land. Corpse Appraiser as well. Yeah, I'm uh, regretting using that Shieldred's Edict when we did after top decking another Shieldred. It's gonna be our last turn to resolve a spell. Then our opponent's just gonna keep up double Devious Cover Up. Alright, Visionary was an excellent draw. So our opponent discards 3 and mills 3. How much mana are we working with? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So let's say we leave 7 mana for Breach the Multiverse. So 9 left. So that's still going to be Visionary for X equals 2 at the very least. Uh, I guess 3 could also work. And then Soul of Windgrace can attack the Invasion, because if they block with Atraxa, we can uh, Miasma to finish it off. So I don't expect them to block. And get back another land here. Another Argoth. Opponent does actually block. So now we can take out Atraxa. And then wanna Miasma with Kicker. And then just channel Visionary for X equals 1, so that's 4 mana, and then 7 to cast. Seems good. And then we could go for Titania here, which is pretty fun. And the opponent has... Shield Root or Atraxa as options. Um, at this point we have 15 cards in the opponent's deck left. Atraxa could also end up uh, milling us, so we have to be a bit careful with it. Yeah, Shield Root's maybe the more immediate threat. They cannot cast Atraxa with her current mana, although they will be able to reanimate one. So I guess we don't want them to bring back an Atraxa for free, so I'll have to grab the opponents. And then we find a go for the throat, Titania, and a land. Six cards left, which isn't much, although we can still cast a go for the throat. Opponent can also get a card back from our graveyard. Shield roots, that works. This they can only activate as a sorcery, so if I take out Shieldred now, they wouldn't be able to transform it, which they otherwise can. Yeah, I guess we'll go for it. Opponent can cast a Devious cover-up if they'd like, but if they cover up, then they cannot transform Shieldred. And then we also get our final chapter here, returning all creatures from graveyards. So our opponent's gonna shuffle some of those back. Sacrifice a non-token creature or planeswalker, Skyclave can go. Titania is about to transform. So yeah, having this big mana advantage may end up determining the outcome of this game. Corpse Appraiser can exile a creature to deny us from uh, getting it back. That's acceptable. And the our opponent cannot find any answers. Next turn, our shield reaches its final chapter. Get all creatures back from graveyards, which at this point includes a couple harvesters. And then in our graveyard, we still have... Visionary, which we can also potentially pick back up. Although with six cards left in library, that doesn't seem very likely. 
But yeah, this was an incredibly grindy game and got the best of this reanimator deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with uh, decent hands. A couple fetch lands plus Soul of Wind Grace ramps into Breach. And in the meantime, we have a Choking Miasma for the more aggressive decks. We'll get a Swamp here. Courtyard can get Mountain. Okay, could play a turn 2 Visionary. Sure, against a blue deck, should resolve here, and then uh, if they want to bounce it, so be it. Opponent considers. So if this is a mono blue haughty gen type of deck, it's going to be tough to resolve any of our spells past turn two. But at least our visionary can develop our mana. Not the best matchup for Miasma either. So we'll just pass a turn. Channeling Visionary at least cannot be countered, so that's one way of uh, maybe getting back a key spell and kind of work our way through a few counter spells. A second Soul of Wind Grace is good too. Found Argoth, that's something we can activate to get past counter spells. Do need another green source before we can activate it. Edict is also surprisingly effective. So instead of running Soul of Wind Grace into Make Disappear, how about we just play Visionary and keep up uh, Edict. I need a bit more mana before channeling Visionary becomes appealing. So opponent gets to draw. Moment of Truth. They put Fading Hope in the graveyard earlier. So if the opponent's plan is to play Haughty Jin, leave up one blue mana, Edict could maybe catch them off guard. Nope, opponent passes. Another Edict is nice. So I won't be able to activate Visionary and play Soul of Wind Grace, so let's just activate Visionary then. At five mana, the uh, blue deck could have a Flow of Knowledge as a great way to refuel. And we also have to watch out for the opponent sculpting the perfect hands with Haughty Jin and the uh, Blue March to protect it. That can certainly kill us out of nowhere. But I don't think I need to force the issue on this turn. Next turn it makes more sense to tap out for Soul when we can pay for Make Disappear. And then if they have a different counter spell, they wouldn't be able to flow of knowledge. Right, Tolarian Terror for one mana is pretty good. So I first want to Edict, while well, we can pay for Make Disappear, and then we can use Visionary afterwards. That works. And had to get past the Tolerant Terror if we wanted to get to a Haughty Djinn with Edict. Found a land. Alright, now it's time for Soul of Wind Grace. Yeah, hope it resolves. Got our double green now for Argoth. Although not sure if we're gonna have time to activate it. Grab a Proving Ground and then just gonna hang on to Shieldred's Edict now. We're at the point where we potentially want to channel Visionary. Thirst for Discovery for more card draw. So in Graveyard we have quite a few removal spells, a couple of creatures. So Visionary can certainly get value here. Start by attacking, see if they have a bounce spell. And get back a, a land. Courtyard gets a forest. So this is their potential flow of knowledge turn, and since we have a second breach I don't mind forcing the issue here. Or we could wait. Yeah, playing into a Make Disappear feels bad. Could also just play Visionary and then activate Argoth. It's not a bad plan. So 
So we get to add more to the board. And yeah, opponent's gonna flow of knowledge now. But next turn's gonna be easier to resolve a breach. Opponent's got a million cards in hand. Discarded make disappears since it was obvious we were playing around it. So yeah, next turn we could see some creatures. It's gonna be a fading hope end of turn. Keeps card on top. And Hodijin may only need to attack us once or twice to end the game. 13 power. Tolarian Terror can soak up a Shielder's Edict. Yeah, that's what we wanted to avoid. Okay, so what's the plan here? I can Edict, activate Visionary, channel it for one and still Edict again. It's kind of an interesting sequence. Could also just breach the multiverse, have them negate, and then we can uh, still Edict at the very least. Sure. Alright, Dissipate. So, Breach is exiled. Let's attack with Soul of Windgrace. If the opponent trades for Tolarian Terror, then Edict can potentially hit Haughty Jin. Trade happens. Right, let's Edict now to force them to respond here. Hopefully it's not a make disappear, but a fading hope. All right, at least they won't be attacking us with Haughty Jin. They do get to replay it, and now we're out of answers, unless we pick a Visionary and then channel for more action. Another Tolerant Terror. Four cards in hand for the opponents. And if they have another flow of knowledge, they're going to get to draw eight cards, which is pretty ridiculous. So, do we want to breach? It feels pretty ambitious here, and it may not even be game-winning. So instead, if I activate Visionary, I'll still have nine mana left. So channel X equals two is six mana. Then I guess we'll have three mana left for removal. So not enough to deal with Haughty Jin. So it's not even all that amazing. Can do this all at instant speed too, so I can maybe jump to Larian Terror and pick up Visionary. Or we can redeploy Soul of Windgrace. And then still go for Breach the Multiverse. I guess that's worth a shot. That resolves, surprisingly. Just find a Tolarian Terror and a Shieldred. Shieldred's a card. There's also Titania, which can... Uh, be pretty effective if it transforms. So this or opponent is just going to sacrifice Tolarian Terror. And then next turn I could transform it. First Titania, which is also a blocker potentially. And then if I play Soul of Windgrace, I can gain a bunch more life. Yeah, I'm kind of liking Titania over Shieldred, strangely enough. Although, yeah, this transforming could be great. Let's try Titania. And then I might want to just use Visionary instead. So we have more blockers available in case they had a counterspell left for Soul of Windgrace. And yeah, there's the end of turn flow of knowledge to draw a million cards. Okay, so yeah, wouldn't be able to answer Haughty Jin. Opponent's gonna no doubt find answers to Titania as well here. So they've got nine cards left, eight now. So decking could be a factor as well this game. Another Haughty Jin, so they get two mana discounts. Thirst, so they're trying to grow Haughty Jin at this point to try and end the game right now. And if they have a blue march, they may be able to make that happen. Titania's potentially forced to chump. Five cards left. Had we taken out Tolerant Terror with Shieldred, then a Blue March may not have been a lethal necessarily. Yeah, there's the March. So I have to activate Visionary in response. 
At least we still have a Tolerant Terror to block the other Terror. And Visionary can grab Argoth, although actually maybe should not have selected anything to gain life off Titania here. Might have been a, a bit more relevant in this situation. So if they can cast another spell, we could be dead to Haughty Djinn. Although Flow of Knowledge with five cards in Library is just going to kill them here. So they may not have noticed how many cards they had left. Or maybe they didn't have any other options. Either way, yeah, our opponent explodes after discarding two cards. What a fitting end to this game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn two, Visionary. Turn three, can activate to ramp. Invasion gives us more mana. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully find a breach to multiverse. Even if we mill it, we could maybe get it back eventually. Opponent on a legendary deck with a Arona. There's breach. Okay. Can get a swamp. And pass the turn. So Miasma could take care of some smaller creatures, but doesn't deal with Rafine or Rona here. So hoping for maybe a shield root to kill some of their creatures and their other spot removal spells. Opponent discarding Adlin, so they might have another one in hand. And the opponent's gonna attack so they can connive, although we can soak up the attack with our Shigeki. Discarding uh, Denix, also good value. Alright, still gonna pick up Visionary. And abandon my Earth of Land. Okay, can cast Soul of Windgrace since we have a fetch land in the graveyard, and that will still set up Breach the Multiverse for next turn while adding a creature to the board. That seems better than uh, Invasion of Zendikar here. Tap land for the opponents, and they go for the throats. Can't make it indestructible, that's uh, three mana. So that happens. A bit of a setback, but Breach can just get it back next turn, unless we mill something better. By casting Breach, we potentially give the opponent access to more copies of Denik, but so be it. Uh, Nissa, I don't think, changes anything, even though we could play a Nissa, play a land, play Invasion, make a ton of mana. And Breach is kind of necessary for us to stabilize. And what do we get from the opponents? A Rafine, we get a Soul of Windgrace. And uh, could get a Plaza of Heroes from the opponents, or an Argoth. Plaza might be preferable here. For points attacking with Aruna into Sylvain Grace, that probably implies an Iganjo that can be channeled to take out or 5 4. So, could instead just block with Rafine, soak up the damage if they want to channel. I don't really mind if Rafine dies. Yogmoth Praetor. Okay. And our opponent passes with two mana up. So now could be a good turn for Nyssa. Can attack with Soul of Windgrace. And potentially also Rafine. Since this choking Miasma is not looking all that great. And counters on Rafine itself, I think. Discard Miasma. Although Miasma would be a way of finishing off the opponent's creatures if they double block. Although at this point they might be looking to channel Iganjo anyways. So um, yeah, one invasion can go. And maybe one visionary. Don't think I'll have time to channel two of them. 
get another land this time. I do want to get a fetch land, potentially. So we enable Nissa. And then I could channel Visionary with a floating mana. I think I'm just gonna let damage happen, see how the opponent responds in case we need to Miasma. And then we can still deploy Glissa or uh, Invasion into Glissa since we get to enable Landfall twice. Opponent's at 11. Glissa. So we've got the ground under control for the most part. But uh, Rafine's still threatening. Could see them play Shieldred next turn to gain some life back. Yep. So, yeah, looking to channel Visionary, get back, breach the multiverse. There's no Shieldreds in our graveyard yet. That would be a good draw. And this definitely points towards Igancho if they're attacking into Glissa. That's fine, I can put Nissa in front of uh, Gix, since we have another one in hand. And then take 8. I think that's the plan. Could have also forced issue on the block with Glissa on Rona, so they also don't get to draw as many cards with Gix. Alright, so we'll take our draw step still. So Nissa's pretty much gonna pay for itself if we attack with the Soul of Windgrace. This time we probably don't want to draw with Rafine as much. So maybe just Soul of Windgrace attacks to get a fetch land back. Yeah, this Breach and Multiverse needs to be pretty good for us to survive. Yeah, let's go ahead and play Nissa. Attack with just Soul of Windgrace. And can go after the Invasion since we're not winning with damage right now. Miasma can go. So now Soul doesn't die to Iganja anymore. Get back a land. We'll go with a fetch land. Could also gain life with Soul of Windgrace. Um, now I'm kind of interested in playing Titania before we discard lands to gain life. Could still channel Visionary for let's say X equals 1, get back Breach, play Titania, and still have some green mana left to activate Soul of Windgrace. I think I like that idea. So channel for 1. How many breaches do we have in the graveyard? Two. So I could do it for X equals two by paying two more mana. Yeah, maybe that's okay. And then I can still play Titania and activate Soul of Wind Grace once. And get double breach. Could also go for Shieldred's Edict actually, which is pretty decent on this board. So one Edict, one breach. So we've got a couple options. See if this transforms or not. All right. So this transforming also makes mana with Nissa, and I could use a floating mana to cast a Shieldred's Edict before it goes away. So 
so goodbye Rona most likely. And then I'll need to play Argoth if I want to transform Titania next turn. So the plan might be play Argoth, play Titania, and then opponent with Make Disappear actually, with Casualty. Well, so now if I pay 4 by tapping Awakened Skyclave, opponent loses either Shieldred or Rafine. Does not let me play Titania, but that seems like a good deal. And then I can still play Argoth to potentially gain 3 with Soul of Windgrace. So our opponent must have either removal for Rafine or another Shieldred in hand. Don't need to use a floating mana, can just pass and then gain 3 if needed. Yeah, but they can kill Rafine. They could uh, kill us next turn. Otherwise we're jumping. Those go up to 7 power, so now gaining 3 is not enough. And a Soaring City, yeah, that's unfortunate. So, yeah, had I let them keep Shieldred, play Titania, discard to Soul of Windgrace to gain a bunch of life, we might have been able to survive here, it's hard to tell. GG's. Very close one here. Seemed like we were about to stabilize. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands got a lot of removal, so hopefully we're up against the creature deck. But I don't think we can mulligan either. Blue-black is the exact opposite of what we wanted to see, although a turn one's Cold Dweller, I guess, points towards a poison deck, which is gonna have quite a few creatures. So I'll pass and then wait to cut down. If they want to counter the cut down, I have got another one. And that's an exchange we wouldn't mind making. Have to be careful once they get to three mana, since they could have a Kaito to let them draw a card without discarding if they get to attack first. So then we wouldn't want to wait for them to get into the attack step. Play a tapped Argoth. No lands in graveyard for Soul of Wind Grace yet, so. That's not ideal, and a prologue. So they are playing kind of the blue-black Poison U deck with a bunch of Proliferate as well. Which is going to be a tough matchup. Okay, we've got the fetch land, so I could get immediate value from Soul of Windgrace if we wait. If I play it now, it's likely just going to get uh, removed while the opponent gets to apply more poison. So we need to get something going. It's not going to be presenting too many creatures for us to kill, so this seems like a pretty bad matchup to keep the hand we did. Hybrid, at least, is not a problem. Could also consider going with uh, Go for the Throat, since I don't expect the opponent to have creatures that uh, we cannot take out with Cutdown, so we keep the cheaper answer for future turns. Okay, so we can play Soul of Windgrace. Play a land first, so we can pay for the conditional counter spell and get back our fetch land here and get a swamp. And then we would love to find a breach the multiverse at some point. Soul of Windgrace is not long for the world's serum snare, I guess just bounces it for now. That's acceptable. Still netted us an extra land. Augury proliferate up to 2 poison. Get back hybrid. If they play it, I'll consider shield roots over Soul of Windgrace. And a Nissa now. Alright. So we can play Nissa, play a fetch land, and still play shield root. And this will find us another creature as well. So that was a great draw. Also very good alongside Soul of Windgrace. Back up Nyssa. If 
they make me sack a creature, we'll let go of Nyssa since we have a backup. Path of Peril with Kicker or Cleave, thanks to the white mana from Rafine's Tower. So Nyssa into Soul of Windgrace will get us another card. And uh, get a forest here. Titania, I can still play. Sure. We have two lands and graveyards, so not enough to meld yet. Prologue up to three poison, so corrupted has been enabled, which could make quite a difference here. Now, curiosity for just one mana. Can still activate Argoth at the very least. Hybrid can be cut down. And I guess we'll do it now. No doubt we'll be back soon. Bone might be able to proliferate here. Maybe another Serum Snare. But we get to untap. Gliss out the draw. So go ahead and attack. And see what's next. Nissa can find another creature. Although between Nissa, Titania and Glissa in hand, so we should have found them all now. Wouldn't be able to use the floating mana. Since Argoth only activates as a sorcery. Third Nyssa. So I think we have one Titania left, and that's about it. And a Serum Snare bounce a Soul of Windgrace, that's acceptable. So I replay Soul of Windgrace, get a fetch land. And then I have to decide if I want to commit the Glissa Sunslayer. Or if we activate Argoth, which can maybe help me transform Titania. I think we activate Argoth, since our opponent might have another Sweeper in hand. We milled one more land, so still not enough to transform. But we are still threatening lethal here. Prologue up to four poison. And our opponent concedes, so they ran out of answers, and that's good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Turn to play Visionary, and then maybe go for Titania first. This can get a mountain. And then Invasion wants to get another swamp. If we're up against a red aggro deck, turn 3 Titania is a big deal. Especially with Visionary that can mill a lands into our graveyard and potentially gain some life. Turn 2 Felden. Yeah, I'll block. It does provide some card advantage, but it saves us 2 damage, which is probably still worth it here. Our late game should be able to overpower the red deck, so card advantage isn't as important. Play Titania. And then hang back. Next turn we could activate Visionary and go for the Throat, so I can maybe block Felden and then pick up Visionary so we don't enable it. Now I think I take two, don't want to expose Titania to removal. And uh, they could also finish off Visionary more easily. If they don't have any blockers, I could also play Invasion and transform it right away, which is decent. Invasion over Gatha, could have finished off Visionary. Gets to deal 4 plus 1. And yeah, pretty nice here. 1 damage to Felden to enable it, finding another invasion over Gatha. We did find Argoth, so that will be nice alongside Titania. So cast our invasion of Zendikar. Get double swamp. Titania can attack. And 
get our Skyclave. So next turn we could already breach the multiverse and hope to hit something expensive. I'll block with a Skyclave, I don't really need it going forward. So they get to dig four cards deep. And Brothroads ends is sort of unexpected here. Can finish off Visionary and Awakened Skyclave. If they have a one mana burn spell, Titania goes as well. But uh, luckily, Titania survives. Okay, so now Breach will gain us some life as well. And that could help transform Titania next turn. Found. Alright, I guess a concession. Not too bad. Would have gotten the opponent's Hellkite. It seems. Koth also an option. And then uh, taking a look at our graveyard. Soul of Windgrace to get more mana going would be an option. Or Shielder to then try and transform. But either way, we have enough lands in graveyard to transform Titania, meld it with uh, Argoth, and then get Titania Gaia Incarnate on the battlefield, which can close out the game pretty quickly. So we were looking good. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. Turn one Proving Ground, turn two probably tap Argoth unless a uh, spicy enchantment shows up. And then this sign to Invasion would be a nice sequence. Blue-green points towards the Poison deck. Don't have the best hand for it, no spot removal, no edict effects, which is kind of what we need. Is this a consider? Yep. At least uh, we don't expect much interaction. Just need to find our own interaction now, since the poison deck is likely to present lethal before we do. Go for the throat was a good draw. Play Nissa. The next turn I could still play Invasion, enable Landfall a couple times, and still cast a three drop that we find of Nissa, or cast a Go for the throat. Other opponents likely to have some protection spells in hand to keep their creatures alive. So Shieldred's Edict, Shieldred are the types of cards we want in this matchup. Cut Down could also be a nice cheap removal spell. And then now with Double Invasion we want to work our way up towards a Breach the Multiverse. So let's see what's next. Three mana. And an Invasion for one, so our opponent gets the Rock Priest, but it's unprotected, so we can take it out with the Go for the Throat now. Glissa's not bad either. So, play land. Play Invasion of Zendikar. Get two more. And then, let's see here. I can actually play Glissa here. And then attack Invasion of Zendikar. Pwn's not gonna chump. And then once Invasion Transform, it also enables Landfall. The land itself can tap for mana, so that still casts a go for the throat here. There's a very small window in which we can cast. Go for the throat with a floating mana from Landfall here, since we're technically still in combat. But uh, this will work. We'll take one poison, but that's uh, definitely acceptable here when our opponent could easily protect our priest if they untap. And that's enough for a concession. Found Titania with Argoth in play, so that could have been something to work towards if we find some more mill effects. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Ideally save our courtyard until after we play Nissa. Miasma against any hyper-aggressive decks, and then Breach has a nice payoff to ramp towards Invasion of Tarkir, okay. For points playing a Battles deck, they could potentially transform the Invasion next turn already, which would be bad news. Since we don't have an answer to a 4-4 Dragon. And yeah, it looks like Render Inert, get the Thunder Maw in play. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good.
Ahsoka down in combination with Miasma kills Thundermaw. So now we face a tough decision. I really want to play Nissa to then next turn be able to courtyard, but that does expose Nissa to removal. Even another uh, invasion of Tarkir would do it combined with the two damage. But next turn I would like to Miasma and cut down in the same turn. So that means doing nothing this turn, passing, next turn Miasma cut down. Or we can play Nissa, hope it survives. And then the opponent might ramp with an invasion of Zendikar. Briefcase is acceptable. And take two. Plus another four. Alright, so Nissa survives, that's great. And we found a go for the throat. So now we've got a few more options, although Miasma also deals with a 1 1 token for what it's worth. So let's start with a fetch land. And we found Glissa. Yeah, going Glissa and then go for the throat seems decent. And can uh, cast go for the throat in the opponent's turn. Don't expect any counter spells. And that might change their sequencing. Storm the Festival. That's a good card. So our opponent might be playing our five color battles deck with Invasion of Alara. And yeah, there it is. Invasion of Alara. And Argamon. So now we're going to want to take out the Thunder Maw before they get a chance to attack. Invasion of Alara finds Into the Fire or Invasion of Zendikar. Probably see a Zendikar to keep ramping, making it easy to flash back a Storm the Festival. Nope, opponent goes for Into the Fire, maybe to help transform the battles here. So that's where now go for the throat on Thunder Maw, it's going to maybe catch them off guard. Opponent kills their own token, and we get to untap, so that was a blowout. Now start by attacking. Draw a card. Find shield root, that's nice. So if I play a land, I'll go up to 6 mana total, not enough for breach, but I guess shield root's okay. Just to increase the pressure. So their decision of not casting Invasion for free and instead going for Into the Fire definitely ended up costing them. But another Invasion of Alara might uh, swing the tide of battle. And we see a Briefcase and Invasion of Innistrand which can take out Shieldred. But they're pretty far from transforming Invasion of Alara, which is the power play of the Five Color Battles deck. Do I want to cut down a 1 1? Yeah, kind of do. This turn we're gonna breach the multiverse. Could attack first, I suppose. Draw a card. Bones at 5. And we found Moonvale Regents and Titania. Could help us gain some life and can also transform if we find Argoth. Either way, get Regents. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, give Titania shots. Although Shieldred could also transform next turn. Their opponent's at 5 life. Can they transform Invasion of Alara? Another Render Inert would be good. Stomper instead. Just dies to a Shieldred's Edict now. There is an Argoth in the graveyard, so Soul of Windgrace could have gotten back, but then we don't have a Titania. I guess Nissa is likely to find a Titania, with uh, Soul of Wind Grace giving us double landfall. But sadly, 
We're just gonna attack for the win here, and that's GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and seems keepable. Turn 1 Rod Priest. It's gonna meet a turn 1 Cutdown. Don't wanna mess with it. Can fetch a Forest next turn to eventually play Visionary. Alright, so our opponent's a green-white poison deck as opposed to the blue-green deck, which is built more around Rod Priest. Okay, now we get to play Visionary on 2. Next turn, activate and play a fetch land to set up Soul of Wind Grace. So against a green-white poison deck, a uh, Choking Miasma is one of our better cards. Sentry's too bad, but... Uh, if we find a different removal spell, we can unlock it, go for the throat, sadly doesn't work. Okay, so now I'm gonna be forced to go for the throat chorus, and then edict, naming non-token can maybe get rid of sentry, but yeah, opponent can easily have another creature here to uh, prevent that from happening. Get a mountain, since we're more likely to draw an untamed green source for Soul of Wind Grace. Pass a turn. Sentry is an artifact, so can't target it with a gopher to throw it. So do I want to take the poison or do I take out Crawling Chorus? Going somewhat likely to play a scarier creature next, so I think I still take the hit. And if they don't play anything else, then I will go for gopher to throw it into Edict. The Seed Core is also active, can give plus two plus one to a one one creature. And a Contaminator. Does seem like they still have maybe a time of safekeeping available. Yeah, I guess we'll have to run into it at some point. Maybe a Tyvar stand. Yep. Alright, need an untapped land for Soul of Windgrace. Glissa's not bad either. That can hold off some attacks. And they've had to use their pump spell already. So there's still hope. Another sentry would be pretty brutal. Skrelf can eventually help them uh, get past Glissa, but for now, no attacks. Okay, so play Soul of Windgrace next. Then they're gonna let Contaminator hit us, apply two poison. I think that's still okay. What if Glissa now attacks? Could also work out, and then we get to draw with it. I doubt our opponent's blocking, maybe with Crawling Chorus, but then uh, Edict becomes more effective. Alright, opponent is jumping. So, I think I still play Soul of Wind Grace, but then next turn, try to go for Edict. Or we might just breach the multiverse, we'll see. Definitely a close game here. Opponent on taps. Gonna see a main phase scroll activation on Contaminator. No, they let the sentry sneak through and then they might just attack with Contaminator. And the token's attacking too. So it looks like maybe another Tyvar's stand. They can pump the token with uh, Seed Core. This would apply a bit more poison, but yeah, maybe I do just block the 1-1. One, one. They tie our stands, but at least they don't get to trample over. It's a bit more poison from Contaminator. Up to 8. And cut down was a good draw. Now cut down, let's see, I guess the seed core is plus two plus one, so cut down can still kill Skralf through it. And then, uh, yeah, we can Edict to deal with Contaminator, perhaps. So let's start with cut down. Could also cut down Sentry, actually, now that I think about it. What's better? I mean, Contaminator is not a problem as long as we have Glissa on defense. If I Edict... Opponent probably gets rid of Annex Sentry, actually. 
but I guess it doesn't hurt to Edict first, since that gives the opponent less information to work with. So we get Visionary back, and then let's cut down Skralv. And I hope there's no protection in place. That works. Okay, so now Soul of Windgrace could attack and get a land to set a Breach next turn. Keep Glissa to hold off Contaminator, and then we can put a Visionary in front of it too, to prevent any potential shenanigans. Although Tyvar's stand is still going to be enough for them to attack past everyone. Another Seed Core, Rock Priest is fine. Alright, so we might be stable. Didn't think we're Terra Sundering. Can Breach. And then hope to hit a Shield Root or something else. Um, points at 14, so still a couple attacks to go. Could also think about picking up Visionary to get back a Shield Root's Edict. Well, let's just Breach right now. And we found... Alright, a concession is what we found. Can have a look at the graveyards here. Another Annex Sentry, of course, would have been pretty good to steal, because that gets rid of the opponent's Bloated Contaminator without triggering Rot Priest. So Sentry probably would have been the pick. And then we can have a look in our graveyard. We did find Shieldred, so yeah, that would have been pretty brutal here. Alright, so we got to see our Junt Transform deck in action, and there are certainly a few synergies I would like to explore more in future builds. Breach the Multiverse alongside Shieldred seems tailor made for each other, as now we can transform Shieldred and also have two full graveyards for all those creatures to eventually come back with a final chapter, so that's definitely a nice one. And then we also get to see Soul of Windgrace alongside Nyssa, which is also quite nice. So yeah, there's definitely a few interesting things going on here. The deck might be a little too sluggish for the uh, best of one ranked ladder, once you start facing those streamlines, monorads and green-white enchantment decks, for instance. But uh, yeah, even there, I could see the deck being okay, so we'll uh, potentially give it a shot at some point. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.